This is helpful for learners to understand so they can identify themselves as creative and imaginative beings in relation to their peers or to simply recognize themselves as being imaginative within the creative process. Likewise, it assists educators in understanding and recognizing that imagination can be represented in ways that make sense for the learners within the developmental stage. Acting in this manner involves trust, in the process, in oneself to take risks and in the congenial learning environment that respects both. Though historically, from my learning experience, learners are often given or receiving information to acquire skills and knowledge which consequently restricts freedom to lead learning autonomously in their own direction with their own imaginative process to make learning more meaningful. The creative process is fun, it should not be taken too seriously. Creativity may seem like a fun, self-indulgent activity to counteract the more serious work of the classroom. But the creative process presents many challenges. It requires concentration, persistence and determination to succeed. It may in fact be a frustrating and difficult process. Creativity deserves to be taken seriously. Adults, therefore, can act as supporters and coaches, facilitators and models of creativity for children. But on the other hand, adults also have the potential to stifle opportunities for creativity by being overly didactic or prescriptive. They can limit creativity by discouraging fantasy or by having low expectations about what young children are able to achieve. Teaching and learning has the opportunity to explore more deeply into a subject which enables children to be more inquisitive through questioning and personal inquiry from the theme. This is a new journey for the school and we are truly still at the start of it, nevertheless there is a sense of freedom to explore creativity within the classroom. cultivating a strong feeling of community within the learning environment. In addition, students encountering difficulties pertaining to language acquisition or cultural adjustment can access counseling and support services, which are widely accessible. These services aim to promote the well-being and academic achievement of these students. Creativity is another term that people attach word meanings to but it can be difficult to define concisely into a single definition as the depth of understanding behind it is more complex. As thought provokingly suggests, the lens in which creativity is viewed is always evolving depending on societal or cultural changes. Therefore, answering, what is creativity, may reflect what is valuable or relevant in that moment in time to the people or persons. From creativity, brings about imagination and innovation. Imagination is the ability to transcend the obstacles to thinking. An important distinguishing factor that is echoed by Kraft, 2002, who suggests to be imaginative, an individual must be able to elevate above obstacles or restrictions placed on them, such as set standards, criteria, or rules. This enables learners the freedom and flexibility to explore more widely an idea, thought or outcome that is original to them.
Children do benefit from free play and unstructured arts activities. But left entirely to their own devices, children's play and artwork can become routine and repetitive. Children need stimulation and creative problems to solve. Adults can help children to develop their creative skills through play. The curriculum should enable pupils to think creatively and critically, to solve problems and to make a difference for the better. It should give them the opportunity to become creative, innovative, enterprising and capable of leadership to equip them for their future lives as workers and citizens. Adults, therefore, can act as supporters and coaches, facilitators and models of creativity for children. But on the other hand, adults also have the potential to stifle opportunities for creativity by being overly didactic or prescriptive. They can limit creativity by discouraging fantasy or by having low expectations about what young children are able to achieve. The Robinson Report argues that, while there are strong links between the expressive arts and creativity, viewing creativity as solely or mainly the province of the arts is unhelpful because it can lead to a denial of the role of creativity in other areas, such as science and mathematics. The Arts Council of England asked the NFER to summarise recent research and theory on creativity in early childhood. The work entailed a selective review of research and theory published between 1988 and 2000 and resulted in a briefing paper on the subject. This article sets out to update the earlier paper and to identify some of the principles involved in helping young children to develop their creativity in early years settings. Some children may need to learn to stand up for their own ideas, especially when these do not conform to those of the rest of the group. But children also need to learn discretion, so that they can judge when it is appropriate to be divergent and original, and when it is appropriate to conform. It is important to consider what might constitute originality in the work of a young child. After all, only a child prodigy could be expected to come up with something new and valuable to society. Instead, each child's creative abilities can be related to his, her personal stage of development. For example, a young child's work may be adaptive and original for that particular child and or in relation to children in their class or age group. 